Commercial fishermen who work the coastline of Oregon have been shocked lately by huge swaths of crab carcasses washing out on the region's beaches. Scientists say the big die-offs are the result of oxygen starvation in so-called oceanic dead zones. Here are the details. The Washington Post reports that scientists are raising the alarm about huge dead zones that are forming in waters near the Oregon coastline. These dead zones are areas where oxygen in the seawater has become very depleted, causing all marine life to either move out quickly or die. The fact that crabs and similar sea animals, unlike fish, are too slow to escape when such a phenomenon occurs means that huge numbers of crabs can die when these dead zones form, and local fishermen have been reporting finding huge swaths of dead crabs that have washed up on Oregon beaches. Scientists say dead zones occur as winds pick up in the spring and summer, driving cold water from the bottom of the ocean toward the surface. That contributes to blooms of phytoplankton, which later die and sink to the ocean floor. Bacteria then consume too much oxygen while decomposing the plankton. Marine creatures like crabs that can't escape the low oxygen zone are left to die. Scientists say they've been recording data that point to a very bad season of dead zones around Oregon later this year. And all this points to crab fishermen pulling out a lot of dead and inedible crabs from the bottom of the ocean in the coming years. The Oregon State Legislature passed a bill this session allocating $1.9 million for research and monitoring of hypoxia zones in the ocean off the Oregon coastline. What's your favorite part of summer? Hanging out at the beach with all your friends? Playing frisbee with all your friends? How about the killer heat waves that have come to destroy us all? If you went for option number two, the U.S. right now has almost certainly been the place to be for the past few days. Here's what you need to know. A severe heat wave affecting 40 million Americans has seen temperatures over 100 degrees Fahrenheit beat records in Wyoming, Utah, Arizona, and Southern California, according to NBC News. It has two main causes, according to the Associated Press. First, a heat dome or area of high pressure. Sinking air from the Earth's atmosphere prevents air near the ground from rising. That sinking air operates like a cap, trapping warm ground air in place, according to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Without rising air, there is also no rain and nothing to stop hot air from becoming hotter. That high pressure works in combination with a two-decade dry spell that has sucked moisture out of soil in much of the western United States. Usually, some of the sun's heat evaporates moisture in the soil, but according to the Associated Press, scientists say the western soil is now so dry that the energy is instead used to make the air even warmer. As a consequence of the extreme heat, at least 14 new wildfires broke out this week in Montana and Wyoming alone. Firefighters also fought fires in Arizona and New Mexico, with U.S. Department of Agriculture meteorologist Gina Palma saying these were certainly conditions that we would not normally see in June. Power networks across the country have also been strained due to increased use of air conditioning, according to Reuters. Operators in California asked homeowners across the state to conserve energy in the late afternoon and evening when demand surges. In graphs published on its website, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency showed that heat waves like this are almost three times as frequent as they were in the 1960s, increasing steadily for over 60 years. Furthermore, the duration of these heat waves is now almost a full day longer. What we are watching here is climate change, and at least part of it is man-made, according to the Associated Press. A study published last year in the journal Science found that man-made climate change tied to greenhouse gas emissions is responsible for around half of the historic drought that caused the drying out of the soil. Added to this, NASA's website helpfully explains that human activities, such as burning fuel to power factories, cars, and buses, cause the atmosphere to trap more heat than it used to, which increases the Earth's average temperature. Now, of course, heat waves have always occurred. The American Meteorological Society simply defines a heat wave as a period of abnormally and uncomfortably hot and usually humid weather, which we all know was hardly unheard of before. But the point is this, if the Earth's overall average temperature is higher, existing factors like heat domes can more readily push us over into extreme heat, particularly as some defenses against that heat, like the moisture in the soil, are also taken away. Hence, you know, America keeps doing that whole thing where it sets on fire a lot, which it didn't really seem to do as often before. The consequences of all this are not just great action shots of massive fires on TV either. Reuters interviewed one Phoenix resident who described the situation in the U.S. right now as feeling somewhat apocalyptic, and they had a point. 
According to the WHO, more than 166,000 people in the world died due to extreme temperatures between 1998 and 2017. What's more, between 2030 and 2050, climate change is expected to cause approximately 250,000 additional deaths per year from malnutrition, malaria, diarrhea, and heat stress. The only response to this, that is anything less than a collective death wish, is a rapid reduction in fossil fuel use. Production of coal, oil, and gas must fall by 6% year-on-year until 2030 to keep global heating under the 1.5 degrees Celsius target agreed in the Paris Accord, according to one UN report. The recent heat wave in the states of Oregon and Washington caused a lot of damage to roadways. In one post on Twitter, a user based in Portland shared photos of a nearby road and said their house began to shake as the road's concrete started to split. The user wrote, The house started to shake and we thought it was an earthquake. But no, the road was so hot it literally buckled. Here's how it happened. Newsweek reports that roads are buckling and breaking apart from the unprecedented hot weather that's been hitting the Pacific Northwest region of the U.S. In the usually cool Portland, temperatures soared to 47 degrees Celsius on Monday, June 28th. Scientists say the problem is that Oregon's roadways were not designed to survive such heat. These roadways are made of concrete slabs that contract in cold weather and expand in hot weather. The slabs were shaped with gaps between them, and these gaps are there to create room for the concrete when it expands. However, these gaps are only big enough to make room for the kind of expansion that happens during normal temperature highs, and the recent heat wave created temperatures so high that the concrete slabs expanded so much that they pushed against each other, causing the slabs to break and buckle. Roads that were made of asphalt, on the other hand, often became so hot that they became soft like toffee, and thus became deformed by large numbers of heavy vehicles driving over them. Meanwhile, workers ventured out last week in the blistering heat to put cracked concrete and asphalt roadways back together. Steel drawbridges were doused with water to make sure they wouldn't swell shut under the oppressive heat. North of the border, a weather station in Lytton, British Columbia, notched the highest temperature in Canada's recorded history, a mind-melting 121 degrees Fahrenheit, or 49.6 degrees Celsius. Soon after that, the town was destroyed by a wildfire. The polar vortex that caused record low temperatures and knocked out power and water across Texas has also paralyzed thousands of freezing sea turtles on the state's coast. National Geographic reports that is the largest cold stunning event ever documented in the U.S. since the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration started keeping records in 1980. As of Friday, February 19th, nearly 7,000 cold stunned sea turtles had been rescued along the Texas coastline. That number rose to more than 9,400 by Sunday, according to the Division of Sea Turtle Science and Recovery at Padre Island National Seashore's Facebook page. Most of the affected turtles come from three species, the green turtle, the loggerhead, and Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. Sea turtles become cold stunned when the water temperature drops below 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. When this happens, the turtle's heart rate slow and the cold-blooded animals become effectively paralyzed, though they remain conscious. In this state, the turtles are more vulnerable to predators, boat strikes, and drowning. Thousands of the rescued turtles are being stored at the South Padre Island Convention Center while they recover. They will be released once ocean temperatures rise above 55 degrees Fahrenheit. The San Antonio Express News reports that as of Monday, more cold-stunned sea turtles were still being found. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.